in this new video of formal decision making, decision trees and utility theory, we're going to look into the principles of decision trees. We will be constructing a decision tree and see how we can do the calculations and use the decision tree to find an optimal solution. We will do this based on an example. I will explain the principles of decision trees very quickly. We will be looking into a simple example. Later, we'll be looking into more complex examples. Eh? We will have more decisions to make. And we also may include, for example, more complex elements related to probability and time value of money. Decision trees can be used for evaluating a large or rather complex situations where we may look into multiple year decisions and uh, different possibilities, different decision scenarios that can be implemented. In our case here, we just look at a few elements. It's very close to the classical expected monetary value calculations when we consider the principle under risk. When we have a decision tree, decision trees are in fact logical structures. They look like a tree and they are in fact developed to automate information and decision making. We built a decision tree from the left to the right. So we start with the end node, the end decision node, and from there we built the or we draw the different possibilities that can exist between which we have to select. Now the root node is typically a square from which those branches start and each branch will have an expected monetary value. Now we have the different alternatives starting here so we may have different solutions the initial or the end solutions that we will consider and we also find at the end of the decision tree the probabilities of events and the outcomes. For example, we may have a solution where we have a calculation node typically indicated by a circle where we can calculate, for example, the expected monetary value of the three events that are possible there. For example, high, medium and low uh, sales values. Now, these are elements that we combine. So in that calculation node, we calculate the expected monetary value of those alternatives. Now, the decision tree we will see here in this example is a very simple, the simple decision tree, but we can find or we can extrapolate the decision tree into a more complex decision-making model where we can look into complex scenarios and we call those decision event chains. So one element, one uh, output may indicate or may lead to a specific decision. And we have to find out what is the combination of all the different possibilities that gives us the best result. Let's have a, a very simple decision tree. And what are the data that we are looking at? Uh, like I said before, when we have this simple type of decision tree, it's very similar to decision making under risk. So basically we can find or we can do the calculation using the decision making under risk. It would give us the same result. Let's have a look at the data that we are going to consider in our example. We have two projects. The project A is building a new ecological combustion engine. And if this project is successful, it will generate a profit of 500K. If the project is late, the profit will be reduced with 60%. And in case of failure, there will be a loss of 50% of the profit. Project B is about building a new APU. It's an auxiliary power unit. It's in fact a kind of an uh, aid engine and the tails of airplanes, large airplanes that can be used to start the main engines. Huh? So these things that 
you can find when you look at the end of the airplane, you may see some exhaust there. Well, there you find the APU. In this case, when the project B is successful, it will generate a profit of 750K. If it is late, the profit will be reduced with 60%. And in case of failure, there will be a loss of 70% of the profit. Do nothing, uh, let's say, do nothing is where we continue the operations with a profit of 100K in all situations. And we can consider the probabilities for success being 20%, late 50%, and fail 30%. Let's have a look at the different elements, the elements in the decision tree. So what we have, the table of the data here, in our case, we have probability for success late and failure, respectively 20%, 50%, and 30%. For the developing of a new ecological engine, we have in success 500k, 200k when we are late and we lose 250k when we are uh, in failure. And when we calculate the expected monetary value, we find that for the project A, we find 125k. We build a new APU, we do the same principle, and we find an expected monetary value, which is basically equal to 142K. And when we do nothing, we keep the situation as it is. We still have our operations going. We have success late or failure. Any of those conditions, we will make in fact 100K and the expected monetary value is then equal to 100K, of course. Let's now start by drawing the simple decision tree and we start by drawing the forward path where we will construct the decision tree from left to right. Let's first consider project A, project A which has in case of success a profit of 500k, when the project is late it has a profit of 200k and in case of failure there is a risk, uh, sorry, a loss of 250k. The probabilities are respectively 20%, 50%, and 30%. Now we do the first branch. We draw the first branch and we add project A to it. The next thing is we add the three events to a calculation node which is indicated by a circle. And basically what we see is that we have the three cases, success, late and fail, together with their probabilities. Now we add at the end of the tree, at the end of this branch, the outcomes for the three cases. We do the same for project B. In case of success, project B has a profit of 750K. In case the project is late, it's a profit of 300K. And in case of failure, it's a loss of 525k. The probabilities are the same, 20, 50, and 30%. And we extend the branches of the tree with project B and the three events, and at the end, again, the outcomes. So now we already have two branches of the tree, but like I said, we have to add another branch which is in fact the do nothing or status quo branch, where we have a profit of 100K in all cases. So basically, when we do nothing or we keep the status quo, we will make 100K in all three cases, whether we are a success, late or failure, because basically we don't have a, pro a project, we don't have a success, late or failure condition that can happen here. Now, the next thing is to start with the calculations, which we call the backward pass. So the backward pass for do nothing or status quo, we don't have to do basically, because the expected monetary value of do nothing is 100K. Let's continue with project A, which is in green. And we see that when we consider the expected monetary values of the three outcomes, 
we look at the expected monetary value in case of success, which is 0 0.2 times 500, which is 100k. We have the expected monetary value in case of late is 0 0.5 times 200 is also 100k. Then we have the expected monetary value in case of failure. We have 0 0.3 multiplied with minus 250 is minus 75k. And that gives us a total expected monetary value of 125k, which we add to the branch of project A. We do the same calculation for project B in red now. We find the expected monetary value in case of success is 0 0.2 times 750 is 150k. We look at the expected monetary value in case the project is late is 0 0.5 times 300. It's again 150k. And then we have the expected monetary value in case of project failure, which is 0 0.3 times minus 525 which gives us a loss of 157.5k or minus 157.5. When we add all those numbers together, I find the total expected monetary value for project B to be 142.5k and I also add this to the decision tree. All the calculations have been done, so basically what we can do now is to look at the conclusion and compare the three outcomes and make a decision. First, we have the expected monetary value of pros, uh, project A, where we have a total EMV of 125k. For project B, we find a total EMV of 142.5k. And for project C or case C, do nothing or status quo, we have basically 100k. Based on this, I can look at the decision and I can see that we have project B with a higher expected monetary value and that will be in fact our selection. We choose the project with the highest expected monetary value. A thing that we're doing here is about those decision trees. We took a very simple decision tree and in this case the decision tree is comparable with our decision method under risk because we only have a simple branched tree. Now we can also have more complex decision trees where we have event chains. It means that one event will trigger another event and we have to see how these elements link together. So the decision tree we will be building there will be more complex. They can become very complex. Another element that we have to consider when we are looking at decision trees is basically the fact that we may have a decision to make over multiple years. And when we look at the revenues that we have, the cost when we calculate the profit, we of course have to take into account with the time value of the money. So basically in the different cases we may calculate the net present value or the time related value of the outcome, the profit of the cases that we are considering. Of course, you can find more information about time value of money in different courses that we also offer and presentations and videos that are, are available on the internet, also on our YouTube channel. Another element that we have to continue or uh, that we have to address is about the probabilities. Typically people give probabilities but they are not always suited to be added to a decision tree. And in that case we have to recalculate the probabilities of the different outcomes. And that can be a little bit more complex. We have to use the Debye's uh, formula which takes into account different conditional probabilities. We will look in those things later in this chapter. Anyway, you're doing a great job. Decision trees aren't always that easy. The one we've seen here is rather easy. It's easy to understand, easy to construct, but in reality they can be very complex. Anyway, I thank you very much for your attention and I'm looking forward to seeing you in our next video. Thank you and bye-bye.